Hey songwriters, welcome back to At Home Songwriting. Today we are gonna talk about going full time with your music and songwriting as a singer and songwriter. It's not an easy task and some people have jumped in with both feet and just went for it. And today I wanted to introduce you to someone that I was introduced to recently when I hosted a podcast, the Song Talk podcast from Toronto. Jeffrey Straker is a singer and songwriter from Canada that for the last 16 years, he's been a full-time musician and he's done it by writing his own songs. He's not a cover artist, he's not a cover band, and he's a singer songwriter that plays piano, which is very near to my heart. We have a really great conversation. So let's jump in and introduce you to Jeffrey Straker. Jeffrey, welcome to At Home Songwriting. Thanks for having me chat. I see, and, you, and, you, and your dog's about to leave us. <laughs> yes, that is Jake. I think he heard the other dog upstairs. So yeah, that okay. was a that was a grand entrance. I introduced <laughs> you and he's like, let me out. Out of here. <laughs> <laughs> True at home songwriting. It's like ever, all of it, all of the above. So Absolutely. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I met you originally when I was co-hosting the Song Talk um, kind of YouTube video podcast with my friend Neil um, out of Toronto. And you know, I, I hadn't heard of your music before, so that was my first introduction, but I wanted to have you on the channel because I love that you're an independent songwriter, musician, you do music full time. You know, I think that's something that a lot of our viewers want to kind of work up to. So, you know, maybe introduce yourself, kind of what style of music you do, you know, kind of what have you been up to lately? Oh, okay. That's a, <clears throat> that's a big thing to try to introduce you. Let me see. Well, I'll start, I'll start with, um, so uh, my name's Jeffrey Straker, as you mentioned, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and pianist in Saskatchewan, Canada. And um, uh, I would describe my music as uh, folk roots slash singer songwriter. And we can get into the pros and cons of describing yourself as something in, in a bit. Um, yeah. I've been doing this as my full-time work for 16 years even though I only look 20. I mean, I know it's really hard to believe. <laughs> no. So I've been doing it for, it's hard to believe for me that it's been 16 years now as my, as my, as my living. Um, and before, before this, I had like another job for a little while and, and it was, you know, it was a, it was a regular paycheck job that I had to cut the cord of to hop into this. So that's a, that's a yeah. thing I, I talk about sometimes. Um, and what I've been up to recently, uh, which are just top line and you can, you can ask any questions about any of this, but I think most recently, so in 2021, one released my last full-length 10 song uh lp uh toured it as much as one could during a pandemic and that involved doing a lot of backyard shows and and, and outdoor cool. shows um but i did like honestly that summer i did about 60 backyard shows so i'm a bit of a i'm a bit of a trooper that way and i'm a i'm a i'm a where there's a will there's a way kind of guy um just and that record was called just before sunrise and then fast forward to this um last September or October, rather, I released a five song acoustic EP, five of those songs, they were all originals, uh, but did them acoustically and called it just after sunset and uh, just and 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 uh, just rearranged them completely differently, like really sparse. And um, it interestingly led to slash coincided with a tour of England that I did wow. in November, which was really wonderful. Um, and and, and, and uh, just there was a whole big lesson in there about other geographies and like like going to other geographies and discovering other listeners and audiences like it was a really fascinating cool. experience and so now in the start of 2023 i'm i'm writing 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 and i'm um i purposely have booked fewer shows though i have some and i'm just writing 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 because i i want to record my next album but it's got to be it's got to be a certain thing that as a typical songwriter i don't know what it is but i'm pretty sure i'll know when i find it <laughs> so awesome. so i'm just I'm, I'm 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 really enjoying the process and not being fixated on what it will be if i'm convinced it's going to reveal itself awesome so let's go way back so i know that you said you know 16 years you've been doing this full time uh prior to that what role did songwriting and music play in your life just in general like when did it show up for you well music uh, manifested itself into my life as a as a six-year-old uh sorry, sorry seven-year-old youngin when i started to take classical piano lessons i mean they were just piano lessons at first but that by virtue of the the sort of the the music education system when you take private lessons it it 
gravitated to classical. And, and so from a very young age, I was taking classical uh, piano and then classical piano. I did it for 13 years. I, I sort of finished that when I was 19. Um, and throughout that time, I, I worked really hard and I got, I got to a fairly high level technically and like playing the repertoire I was playing concertos and sonatas and you know these big pieces and things um and and loved the technique that I learned and I really loved the music but I, what I really realized when I hit 19 I was like I don't want to be a classical pianist and, and also I don't think I actually have the chops to do it it's so competitive I'm just I'm not that good frankly yeah um, though I though I love it so I was like this isn't this isn't for me and I went off to university and got a science degree <laughs> which is which is which is a bit like from right brain to left brain you know um yeah. but during that time when I was taking classical lessons and this is probably like the classical music I studied like it was it was a really great musical foundation but I also like um my I grew up in the country I grew up on a, on a grain farm in rural Saskatchewan and a lot of our neighbors were musicians and and they would bring their instruments to our house on the weekends and and jam it was like an old time music like it like picture something on a porch in tennessee plop it into canada and that's what it was you know yeah. it, 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 you know except in our basement um uh <laughs> and so fun it was so fun and and the only reason i mentioned that is because it was my ear my musical ear education and and i was playing sometimes like electric bass or sometimes keyboards or even I think a bit of accordion whatever just like yeah. and and I no one wrote these songs down and so you learned them all by ear and to play along you simply had to learn them by ear because there were no notes and it was such a great musical ear education you know and so that ran in tandem yeah. with my classical studies and so the 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 cumulative effect of all that was is that I loved these old folk and country and like old country uh, you know, traditional tunes, but I also had this pretty heavy classical education. So it was a weird sort of, you know, weird sort of pot to stir, if you will. But uh, so, and then at 19, I just stopped. I'd had so much of the, the, the classical education. I literally quit it and went to university. Wow. A few years into my science degree, I, I discovered that I wanted to try to play the fiddle. And um, uh, I bought a I was given I was given a fiddle actually, and uh, and I started taking some like um, Celtic fiddle lessons, and I really enjoyed that. Um, sure. And you know, and and then you know, um, moved to Toronto and and uh, got a job, my first job, and it was there that I discovered this singer songwriter scene. And cool. um, there were all these people. Long story short, all these people in all these bars singing songs that they'd written. None of them were actually, I would say, great musicians that really stood out to me. But what they were yeah. great at was stringing words together in really compelling ways. And none of them were famous, but yeah. many of them were so good. And like, I felt like actually stupid that it had never dawned on me that, you know, you or I, or the person across the room sitting at that table in the coffee shop could also write songs. Like, like it had never really dawned on me. Uh, and so it opened this, you know, for better or for worse, this box uh that i was curious to explore so do you think then from the classical training you thought that like songs just came from composer somewhere like you didn't realize that like people were out there actually writing that way or, or what do you mean by that yeah that's probably what i thought i really think i didn't give it much thought um because the entire classical world as a student of classical music is built on interpretation like you're sure. interpreting music that someone else made. And I was so focused on that. I mean, of course, it's not that I had never turned on a radio. Of course, you know, I had turned on a, a radio, like I listened to things and I had loads of pop and rock and country music that I liked too, because I grew up in a very country music household. Um, but, it, but it just, I, it was always, I guess, it was just in my head like, oh, someone else writes those songs and I'm just here to listen to them. Like, you know, it was really, it was quite interesting. So, do you yeah. remember, do you remember that moment when you decided to try to write a song then? Like, obviously you're in Toronto, you're seeing artists that are out there doing it. Um, do you remember thinking, I'm going to try that? Or what was that for you? Yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, I, I had written a couple in high school, just like, okay. but I think I was just like, farting around like I like I, I it was never ever gonna be anything that could actually be like real you know what I mean like it yeah. was like the idea that you know it was just it was just the sort of this fictitious little silly thing I was doing um when I was in Toronto though I think it was like 
I, you know, you know what I started doing? There's a songwriters, a uh, thing called the Songwriters Association of Canada, the SAC. And it's a bit of a organization that, you know, they, they host these get togethers and like they have, they'll have a speaker who comes in. Like, it's probably not dissimilar to what, what you're doing, except like, I think it's easier to, to get, to get to you. Cause they were up in Mississauga at West of Toronto, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but I would go to these and just sort of, I just met a bunch of like-minded people who were, who were all literally in my shoes. They were all people who were probably kind of scribbling some songs at home. Some of them were, had, were further along than I was, um, but some of us were really just starting and it was just a very encouraging atmosphere. And um, in tandem with seeing a lot of these people in these clubs and bars and coffee shops singing their songs, I then was able to talk to and verbalize whether people like realize, oh, okay, I'm not alone. There's lots of us who want to muck with this, but we've just not done it. Um, yeah. And so, you know, there, it was a bit of a sort of a, just this sort of community of newbies. I think, I think that's what encouraged me to, to like put pen to paper in a way where I was like, okay, I'm really going to try this. And has piano stayed your kind of, obviously you said you learned fiddle. Has piano stayed your instrument of choice this, this whole time? It has, yeah. In fact, I'm terrible at the fiddle because uh, I, I got decent at one point. But the fiddle is one of those things that if you don't, if you don't keep doing it, like these, like these fingers have to do this all the time, and you're making the okay. notes on a piano. You just hit a note. Like you want to play a C, sure. hit a C. On a fiddle, you got to make the C and then play the C. <laughs> and it's a whole different thing. And so I'm terrible at the fiddle. But piano has stayed my my mainstay. Um, and it's interesting. It's it's a <clears throat> there's there's pros and cons to it because. The piano is becoming less and less common as an instrument you'll see anybody on the stage playing. Everybody plays the guitar. Everybody. True. That's um, true. I very, actually, no. I actually, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off, but no. I actually tried to make a playlist of piano singer songwriters because I play keys as well. I'm yeah. self-taught, not even close to classically trained, but, but I wanted to listen to other piano playing songwriters and it's super hard to find them. It's so hard. And, and me, like you, like, I'm very interested. Okay. Hey, other piano playing singer songwriters, like, how do you approach accompanying yourself? Like, and it's yeah. easy, it's easy to kind of find the Carol Kings, Billy Joel's Elton Johns, but like yep. move beyond that era. It's like, hello, where that's are you? <laughs> that's exactly. It was like, when you search for that, you get Elton John, Billy Joel, and like Carol King. That's yeah. it. Like yeah, that, like, that's it. I know. So <laughs> that's so, good for us, right? That's good for you. You're <laughs> like, <laughs> well, so that that is the good part and that we're a rarer breed. So like people who look for that tend to find like the, then they it helps them to find me because I'm one of the few people doing it yeah. on the on the con side. Um, and this is something, like I, I talk about this with people um, when it comes up, but like being a, a singer pianist, even though my music is quite rootsy folky and that I'm very much uh, a storyteller in my songs, accompanying it by piano for some people makes it sound poppier than it is. Like for some people, folk music mm. is a guitar and it sounds ludicrous to say, but there are loads of people out there who are like, piano's not folk. Like, and I, I've met them. Some of them, some of them are bookers of gigs and they're, they're like, you're not a folk musician. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and I'm like, okay, like whatever, like you don't even mean about it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've, but I've met other like, more like I'll call them more open-minded and, and like just sort of consumers of, mu of music, not a genre. And they're like, oh, they're like, yeah. Like they're like, of course, of course your music fits into the folk roots genre because like your story, your songs are such story songs. And let's face it, the piano was the first folk instrument. Like every house had one, everyone sat around it yeah. and sang songs. And so, 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 the, so the piano is, is good in that there's fewer of us. It's bad in that some people don't hear it, don't hear it the way I hear it. Anyway, but it, you know, yeah, it's a funny thing. But maybe that should be just because what is so big, it is guitar, you know, so they, they associate it with, you know, it's kind of like when electronic stuff started coming into country, like people were like, that's not country. But yeah. it's like, yeah, it is. The the drums are just different, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. so, so you're in Toronto, you're, you're seeing this scene, you're kind of getting into the scene. How long did it take before you said, or I guess I should ask first, like, what did it look like from that time to when you said, I'm going to do this full time, going to jump in and that's going to be my career? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, what I can summarize that period as is like, <clears throat> It's not like I did a ton. Like it's not that I made a lot of headway, but I penned enough tunes and had started singing them around in little cafes and clubs and, and, and open mics too. Things like that were really important to me. Where 
I could I could start to I was starting to notice I thought that that more people were listening like you know not everyone cool. there were there were not lots of people at these gigs but I was like okay yeah. there's a few more people listening and and all it did was encourage me and 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 I'm I will always go back to me being I'm very much uh alive I'm in this for the live like like I'm all about the live the touring the live performance that's my thing and it was from the get-go because the get from the get-go the signal I received that I was doing something that there might be an audience for came from people in front of me whose facial expressions I could actually see, uh, you know, uh, in a room together. Um, it meant a lot to me. Um, yeah. So, so, and the, but there wasn't a lot of that, just, to, just enough for me to be like, mm, I think I want to quit my job and try this. And it's, it's kind of silly that I wasn't like, you know, I was, I was balancing it with a job. <clears throat> then I was like, oh, I think I want to quit my job, which is in hindsight was kind of a dumb decision actually. <laughs> Well, so that I mean, that's a good question. I mean, did you have a lot of income to replace? Like, was quitting a job to become a full time musician? Was that like a huge leap for you? Like, like, what was that like? Big leap. I mean, regardless of the amount of money you're making, if you have a job that is that is sort of like paying whatever bills you have, and you know, um, has has, you know, has often jobs, at least in Canada, I'm sure America is the same where like, you know, you get like, dental benefits and things like, you know, like you get yeah. things like these benefits, right? We still and have for, to pay for our health insurance here. Yes, I know. I know we're going to get into that, get into that plot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but so, but so, you know, whatever. So I, I had a job that, you know, paid me and had a few benefits, whatever, you know, it was sustaining me. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was, yeah. it was good. And then I was like, no, I want to go be, I want to go be a singer songwriter. I want to put my digital piano in my car and drive across the country with z absolutely zero security. <laughs> like that's essentially what I did. Um, wow. And so, but but I'm a I'm a pragmatic person, and I and I told myself, self, you get one year to okay. see, if, see if this is going to work. And it doesn't work. You can go back and 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 go to the same job, go to a different job, and it's and 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 I my main thing was I did not want to be the coulda woulda shoulda person at the dinner party when I turned sixty five, uh, because like I, I I I'm I'm I've always been someone who's like just try it, try it, try it. Then I was like, yeah. I can't not practice that if I've preached it to everybody. Um, and I and I had been to dinner parties in Toronto where, where this, there, I was running into some older people who were like, oh, I was going on about me, my music dream. And, and they were talking about their dream they once had. And they're like, oh, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, stuck with my job, got the pension plan. Now, now I'm relaxed and I'm 65. And I'm thinking like, and you could be dead tomorrow. Like, and not, not, <laughs> because, of, not because of age, but like no right. one knows what tomorrow is going to bring. Right. And, and so I, I had a, a, a really great kick in the pants, which is uh, visited a great aunt of mine in an old folks home uh, in Toronto, and she had Alzheimer's. And um, she and it had progressed to the point, uh, she, she was a great aunt, visited her one day with my grandma, who was her sister. And that day we walked in and my grandma turned to me and said, she doesn't know who I am anymore, I can tell. Hmm. And I was like, Poof. like, wow, I was like, Great Aunt Mary didn't choose this. Yeah. And for all I know, that could be me. And so, I don't know, you don't know, Chad Shank. That could be you. Like, we don't know. Yeah, we right. all bumble around thinking we're mortal. And, I, and at that moment, I was like, you know what? I would rather, like, not knowing what my end point is, I can't, I can't choose that. But what I, yeah. can, what I can choose is, and create is the path along the way to wherever it is that I'm going to get to. And I was like, I'm going to be ah. So I walked out of the home that day, called my boss, and I was like, on my cell phone, and said, I quit. And, wow. And then I began that year to see what happened. <laughs> so then you became rich, right? That's the moral of the story. Oh, I was rolling, rolling in hundreds <laughs> in my bathtub. Exactly. <laughs> no. No, but so, so did you have, did you know how to make money in that realm? Because I think a lot of people, if I asked viewers right now, how would you make money if you quit your job today? They'd be like, okay, I'll sell music, I'll do gigs. Okay, but do you know what that entails? Did you know what that entailed or... <laughs> no. And, and the weird thing is like coming from a job job, like, and it was a job that it was in marketing and, and like business. And so yeah. um, my managers, my bosses were like, what's your plan? Because the, that whole job was about making a plan. And I was like, I don't got a plan. And they were like, <laughs> you're insane. And I was like, 
maybe. Um, but I actually have this feeling that I can't ignore. I, mm. yeah, it's hard to explain. And off I went. And, I, and I, I think what I figured and what turned out to be true, I was like, I'm just going to try to sing my songs for people and just do live gigs. <clears throat> and, and, and what I wanted to do in that year was just see, is there an audience for the noise I'm making? Like, Interesting. Yeah. are there people who want to hear this? And of course, and I actually, I do not believe you can even sense that out by sticking your songs online because now half the battle is like, you can put them online. There might be an audience. They might not find you. Like, correct. You yeah. know, like you can have yeah. a number in the phone book. That doesn't mean someone's going to dial it. So, so like, yeah. you know, so I was like, I'm going to go out there and hope to the gods of word of mouth that the, the songs that I'm singing, there'll be a few people who find them and they'll tell a few more people and a few more people. And, and I'm giving myself a year and I want to see what happens. And by the end of that year, like, and literally I was singing, I would sing like I, I the phrase I use is I would, I would sing for the opening of an envelope. Like I would sing, <laughs> I would say, I would create weird, like I'd cold call a museum and be like, do you ever do gigs? They're like, no. I was like, would you host one? They're like, oh, maybe, you know, like, like I was yeah. uh, any, I would, any, I would, like, I was ruthless. And, uh, you know, I'm not really a bar gig guy. Cause like, I'm a, I'm a kind of a, like, I have some, I have a lot of up-tempo songs in my repertoire, but I love the ballads, story ballads. And like, sure. I was saying that in a bar. So you got, you got to know, I really quickly figured out where I fit and didn't fit. And that was really important. And by the end of the year, though, I wasn't like wealthy by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. I was making enough money where I was able to sustain myself. <clears throat> and I, I was in, I was eating a lot of canned tuna, you know, like, like, you know, I was, you know, <laughs> you were, doing... yeah, you weren't living it up. No, but I was also making a living from music. And that was my goal. And I was like, and, and I could see that, like, I, I'd gone from putting not like whatever time I had into music to putting all the time I had into music. And I saw the results kind of do this, you know, if that's, yeah, you know, yeah. and I was like, I convinced myself that if I keep doing this, I think it's gonna, the trend, the trends here is good, I, th I think. You was know? it stressful? It was a bit stressful. At the same time, like, it also, like, it was exciting. I don't think yeah. anything had ever excited me that much by way of work or, or anything, you know? Yeah. Maybe the odd, maybe the odd crush had, I, I don't know, but like, like, <laughs> but like, but like work-wise, it was so exciting. I, I was so energized by it, you know? Um, so were you, so obviously you're singing at anywhere they'll let you sing. Are you charging at ev all of those things or yeah. Yep. So you just yep. said, I don't sing for free. Yep. This is how I make my money. Yep. No, none of this exposure BS. No, you know? no. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say never. Like there might've been the, odd, I, I would, I would, I would, Odd for the, the odd time, chuck in my services for free if it was, say, like a benefit for like a really, like a good charity or like, or a, sure. a church thing or like if some, whatever, or something, right? But yeah. generally, these were like, I'd get a fee or people would pay an admission. <clears throat> and, um, you know, sometimes there were like very few people there, like, like, but it's funny, like, I, I'm right now talking to you from this, the capital of Saskatchewan, which is called, uh, unfortunately, it's called Regina, which, which is a <laughs> horrible rhyme scheme to that word. <laughs> That's Anyways. amazing. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's the Latin word for queen, in case anybody wants to know, because it was named after Queen Victoria. Okay. Anyways, um, but so my first gig I ever did here, I remember, you know, 16 years ago, there were eight people in the audience. I remember it distinctly. I can see the room. I can see the piano. I had this guy playing cello beside me. It was a lovely little gig. Eight people. Yeah. Same same city. This Christmas, I did uh, two shows back to back in December, and they sold about in combined about fourteen hundred tickets. And so, and it's not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not bragging at all. But but it's only to say, like, there. What I've discovered over time, even in that first year the only secret in the business of building an audience is is i think is two things one of course the base expectation is there have to be songs that people want to hear but there's a lot of people out there with songs that people will enjoy if they hear them sure the second thing is rep repetition you got to keep going mm -hmm. circling back to where you've been and in in this city where i am i've, I've circled back here a lot and it's like ruthless perseverance um 
has helped build an audience. So, so it, it's, it's, it's been, it's been fascinating. It's been fascinating. That's awesome. And I think, you know, people watching, you know, there are people I'm sure that that want to give that a shot where they say, I want to do music full time. I think some people, though, have more of a dream that is bigger than I just want to play music and and make money. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's people who want to be a star or a celebrity. But what I love to let people know is that there's a lot of people making money as musicians that are not the superstars, right? Like you're living yep. proof of, you know, you're, you're doing well, it's taken you a while to build up to where you know, you are now. But you were brave enough to do it. And I know some people might not be able to do what you did, right? They might not be able to call their boss and say, I'm done. I'm going to be a full time musician, but they could start gigging while they have another job, right? Like they could. Yep. And then that money gets a little bit bigger all the time. Yep. And then eventually you transition out, right? Yep. Yep, that's exactly. and you know, and so a couple of things you said there make me want to just add a couple of things in. So like, th there's loads of geographies in, in Canada and North America where, where I still go and, and it's still really small audiences because back to the, that principle of looping back, like there's places where I, I've not been or haven't looped back to. So I, there's places where I go and still play to teeny audiences. And yeah. do I care? No, um, because <laughs> what, I, what I love is <clears throat> playing my songs for people. I, I, I get off on songs connecting like live yeah. like i really get a charge out of that you know and um um i've never i've never like my goal has never been superstar like that's that's not, that's not i like I, yeah. it's never been it never will be it just and i think that links back to um what, what what you just said about like there is this very doable very sustainable we'll call it a tier uh, of musician like you know, like it's not superstar it's not it's not it's it's not um hobbyist and we're not talking about anything about ability here it's about like being able to earn your right. your, your 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 income um right. where you really can su sustain a, a decent income um and you're and you're kind of under the radar of an awful lot of people you are under the radar of an awful lot of people you know um yeah. and and it's funny like how many people don't realize that and, and even though all have done say in, in the city i mean i've done like done some of these big shows recently i i run into people who see that and 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 they come up to me and they say god it must be so hard and, I, and, <laughs> and, and i'm like yeah i'm living in a fridge box behind the mall like 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 it's like yeah. you know you know because people generally so it's not just other songwriters who don't understand there's this very sustainable tier of of like living of being a performing songwriter i would say the general public is really uh ignorant in the true sense of the word of that that is a, a thing and, and i didn't know either i had to i had to discover it you know um so, but, I, but i'm happy to tell others you know hey it's it's a thing yeah well i think that's great that we're having this conversation because people watching we'll see that, you know, there's opportunity out there to develop yourself. Um, I know someone's probably thinking, yeah, but you have to go play cover songs. You know, you have to go to the bar and play cover songs. What's your response to that? You do not. And I am not, nor have I ever been a performer of cover songs. Um, every now and not to say cover songs are terrible. Every now and then I throw one into a set, like one max, um, because learning a cover song inside out is probably some of the best songwriting education you're ever going to get like it's one thing to learn yeah. the words it's another thing to learn the chords and count the beats in the measure and realize where simon and garfunkel stick in half measures all over the place like like it's all <laughs> to learn cover songs well is a really great education so i'm i'm a i'm an i'm an advocate but i've never uh sang cover gigs it's just because that doesn't excite me so i never wanted to do that sure. um uh, so yeah, no, don't. I, I I think that's a that's a, a fallacy. You don't you don't now no. Yes, there are gigs out there where you can go sing cover songs. Um, the trick one runs up against, and I and I mean, <clears throat> and I think the reason I understood this maybe kind of quick is the 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 work that I worked in prior to doing this was kind of around branding in business. Mm -hmm. And what sure. I think I was always pretty cognizant of is if you go out and be the cover song singer then you, you are what people see. And if people yeah. see the cover song singer, you are the cover song singer. So then good luck trying to convince that person you also have your own songs. Because as simple as that concept seems, people, for better or for worse, 
have teeny tiny boxes and file folders in their heads that they <laughs> slot things into, but you're yeah. already in the cover song folder, so forget it. So you, I, I would propose it is, I mean, I, and I shouldn't say it's impossible. Of course, there's, uh, from what I understand, and there's songwriters all over Nashville who are, you know, singing cover songs like literally to make a hundred bucks, you know, at Tootsies yeah. or whatever, whatever they do. And, and, you know, but, and, and they're also writing their own songs really well and everything. But, but I, I would say that is the exception and not the rule. By and large, the world outside Nashville doesn't really get that if you're a performer out there in a bar, they see you singing cover songs, they'll come up and say to you, you should get a job on a cruise ship. And, and you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, no. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I want to get to songwriting process here in a bit, but my my last question kind of about the business side, you know, because people watching are probably wondering this. So you don't have to give numbers, but percentage wise, would you say that your living is made from the live performing fees or selling your music? Live. My, even, even though <clears throat> numbers of venues have have dwindled a bit over the last say 15 years. We've all sort of seen, I think, at least in Canada, there's fewer venues than there were 15 years mm -hmm. ago. Um, there are still loads of places to perform um, and there's loads of festivals throughout the summers, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say about 75 to 80%, 75 to 80% of my income comes from live performing. And then the rest is some combination of royalties and licensing um, sure. to like film TV or whatever. Um, but the brunt, is live. Um, do you have a manager? Are you self managing? Or like, are you like, how does that look for you? I have a I have an agent. I've, I've been with the same agency for who booked me for live for like 12 years. And okay. I and I and that started in the in the in a, in a funny kind of way. But anyway, luckily, we've been together. And it's a great relationship. Um, <clears throat> I've been in and out of a few manager relationships that, that none of them have really worked. None of them ended disastrously it's just that yeah. I'm, 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 they, they just didn't work and so i'm self-managed right now and the thing i would say to people uh who are who are thinking like oh i need a manager the answer is no you don't <laughs> um because <laughs> because you you do i believe no one needs a manager until they've managed themselves well to know what their manager should be doing and if you've never managed yourself uh -huh. well how on earth can you expect someone else to manage you because you don't even know what you need um you know and and uh sure. a manager relationship an artist manager relationship is harder than a marriage because the marriage always has love as the thing you're fighting for. And if obviously if there's no love there, the whole thing dissipates. But if yeah. there's love there, that's always the thing you come back to that you're, you know, you know, we've got this love, we can have our fight about where we put the cereal box and who left the margarine open, blah, blah, blah. But we've got <laughs> the love. In an artist manager relationship, there's no love. The manager has found you because they like your songs and they think they can make money and yeah. there's no love. So if they're not pushing the peanut forward and helping you do one of those two things they came into it for, if they're not doing that, what's the point? You know what I mean? So yeah. like, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's really tricky. The number of artist manager relationships that work versus don't work. I bet the ratio is like one to 99. Yeah. Well, and I think what's interesting too about agent, because I hear a lot of um, independent musicians say, I just need an agent, I just need an agent. But it's kind of like one of those things what you just said is like, but do you though, are you at a point where you actually need an agent? You said you've been with your agent for like 12 years. Yeah. And you said you've been doing this for 16 years. So that yeah. means you either were doing it yourself for four years, mm -hmm. or, you know, like yeah. you didn't just get an agent. No, no. I mean, I did it alone for four years. And then my, the agent who found me at the agency, they found me from a music video that like, in the weirdest way, got its way onto TV. It was like, it, it shouldn't even have been there. And anyway, it's a whole weird story, <laughs> but it did. And then the, this guy called me up and he's like, hey, I work with this agency. And it, anyway, and we've been, cool. I've been with his agency ever since. Now, what people have to realize is agents don't rarely will they go just like, find you gigs. Everyone thinks, oh, if I had an agent, they'd find me all these gigs. That's not what happens. <laughs> what, what, what they do, agents are wonderfully, they're wonderful administrators. They're connected administrators. They understand this business. They're great at uh, drafting a contract, collecting a deposit, getting signatures on a contract, filing the contract, blah, 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 that, that kind of stuff. That's the main thing that they do. Your brand that you've created is generating the gigs generating the bookings. The agent isn't saying, 
isn't like yeah, th there is a point I, and this isn't like there's exceptions to this too there is a point like it, for summer festivals with my agent i'll be like hey I've, there's a couple of festivals I'd, I'd like to play in eastern canada he'll be like yeah yeah okay i'll, I'll work on a few but generally i'd say 90 percent of what these agents are doing are administering the gigs that are coming to you because you're you not because you have an interesting agent. yeah right. That's awesome advice that people don't get to hear. Yeah. And you're paying them 10 to 15% to do that too. So, right. So that's cutting into your, yeah, what you're making. Um, so now let's talk about process. So when you are writing songs, I know you said you've been writing for a new project. Mm -hmm. Do you have a certain way that you start or, or, you know, what it, if I said, how do you write a song? How do you not, and not like, how would you teach someone how to write a song, but how do you sit down to write a song? Oh, it, it seems like process seems to be a little bit all over the map um, because I'm, all, I'm I am touring so much that often what happens when I get a good idea, like uh, I'm, I'm on the road somewhere. So I have to capture down on the nugget, whatever that is, singing an idea into a voice memo on my iPhone or typing a lyric into a note in my iPhone knowing that it's there and hoping to God when I go back to find it, when, when I have time, that, you know, that, that the excitement is still there. <clears throat> so I've had to rely on that a bit. Um, and, and right now I'm in a bit of a, a luxurious space where I, I, I carved out time. I knew I had to carve it out or it would never be here. So I kind of have all of January and a lot of February just to go back to these tidbits and and, cool. and work on them. And that's been a really wonderful time. I don't think I've ever been able to carve this out like this. Um, and I've really enjoyed that. So I've been going back to some of these and, and maybe there's a bit of a benefit in there of having had some distance from the idea. Cause some of them I've just kicked to the curb immediately. I'm like, oh, that I don't, mm -hmm. I don't feel that at all. And some of them I'm like, oh yeah, I still feel that. And, and I think that's a really good sign that there might be something there and then in I'll go. So are those nuggets starting as like, uh, concept? Are they melody ideas? Like all of the above? What does that look like for you? I think uh, there's they've mostly been phrases, <clears throat> and some of them okay. seem like uh, some of them are just like a, a single phrase. Like one of them was "sailing away," um, and I had the and what came with the phrase "sailing away" was a memory of um, when I was a kid on the farm where I grew up, we had this big, we call them sloughs, some people call them ponds. And, we, and I would, we would build, my brother and I would build these rafts and we would go floating out on these rafts on this big pond uh, cool. with, with a big stick um, pushing it along. And, and I had this idea driving one day, because um, related to this, I've, I have discovered, and this has been a wonderful discovery, that being in motion, whether it's running, I'm a runner or driving in a car, um, somehow it's very weird um yeah. turns off my consciousness and engages my subconsciousness and ideas just like it's really weird like i feel like i'm a little bit crazy when i'm doing it but it's wonderful if you can get in there um so the sailing away came during a drive and and the memory like i said was on this on the, being on this raft but what i realized i was like I, I was like why is this in my head what's up with this sailing away because that's part of the trick right when you get a phrase it's like who, who, like, why is it interesting and why should anyone care? And I thought, well, yeah. the thing about rafting as a kid is we were escaping. We were, mm. we were, we were, we were, even though we were only going to the middle of the pond, we were going somewhere. Uh, and then, and I sort of, as I'm driving, I was like looking where I literally was on tour away from my home. And I was like, and I'm going somewhere too. Like, and then I was like, you know, our, our entire lives we're sailing away somewhere. And in fact, time with, by the virtue of time itself, we are all sailing away, uh, you know, like if you want to get deep about it. And, and, and the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, there's really something here. And so that, that whole song, that the phrase sailing away became the line I kept coming back to at the end of each verse or chunk, but yeah. it wasn't a song about rafting. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like so uh, yeah. even though I had this nugget on the road, when I had time to sit and distill, it became something uh, bigger and different, I think. Um, so then d obviously you're thinking about that concept, like lyrically, do you write the lyric and then sit down at the piano or is it kind of together or what does that process look like for you? Well, th with that one, it was the lyric first, the, or rather the phrase sailing away. Yeah. And so when I'm on the road, I didn't actually have at the time, I didn't have a melody with it. It was just, it was the concept of sailing away. This whole idea that we're all sailing away for our entire lives we're sailing away and then ultimately we sail away but then yeah. so when i got back to my to my house and had time you know through early january 
well, you know, at some point in mucking with that concept, I was at my piano, like right there. And, and, and I was like, I was like, you know, what, what could this be? And you start, you know, saying the word and playing chords underneath it and singing, singing the word. And I always sort of find that it, something emerges, you know? Um, yeah. But one thing I, the, I think part of the reason this Sailing Away song popped to mind here is I think I started working on this on like December 28th, around there. Um, it's still not quite done. I've rewritten it about seven times. It's wow. like, and, but it's gotten better each time. Like, and and, and it, it probably wasn't until the seventh time where I was like, oh, okay, this feel, I feel, I feel this now. Like, the, like because, but something was wrong. And I, the worst thing was, and I hate this, but I didn't know what it was. And, and like, I was on the cusp of being like, who can I call? Who can I call? Who can tell me what's wrong with this? And I was like, no, I have to figure this out. And, 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 it, and, and the, the discovery or, or the tool I used rather came back to something I once heard some songwriters say, and I think it was Pat Patterson, if you've ever heard of that. Yeah. Kind of guy. Yes. Yeah. I've actually went, taken his courses through Berkeley. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did some of his workshops in Canada, I think before he might have been at Berkeley, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But he, it, one thing yeah. he said, he said, the best way to figure out if it's working or not is to sing it like repetitively over and over and over and over and over and over and over, like to yourself. But you'll probably get sick of it, but keep doing it. And, 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 I've, and I've actually used that tool a lot um, yeah. because, man, I tell you, it's better to do that 50 times in your house than do it 20 times in your house. And on the 50th time, when you're out on the road, be like, oh, yeah, that's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so his, his repetition rule really did help me sort of, you know, in this rewrite. So it's, it's close. It's really close. But yeah. So that brings up a good question, too. Are you sometimes taking a new song and trying it with an audience to see how it's working there? And does that help you pick what you're going to, like, put on a project? Or what does the live do for your songwriting that's that's an interesting question because i think i've started using it a bit more as a tool the, the the live shows as a bit more of a tool um to aid the songwriting process than i used to in that mm. i'll get a song to where it feels really good for me now um and it used to be that then and it still can be sometimes i'll be so sure of one i'll be like yeah i'm gonna record this one that like i really like this one and sometimes yeah. i'm like i really want to just kind of like test drive this and, and i'll and, I, and i'll introduce her to the show and say this is brand new um you know for the first 10 shows i'll tell them all of the first people to hear it even though they might be the 10th show like whatever uh <laughs> and then uh but 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 the whole point is like they're 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 the first years on this thing and i'll sing it and going back to something i said earlier in our chat here like i really um th like get all my energy from a song connecting i've like i've never been in this for applause i don't i could care less but you can feel when you're on the stage or just like maybe there's no stage that's maybe it's a teeny tiny room and if you can see people yeah. you can feel if a song is landing or not like you mm -hmm. you feel it they feel it it lands or it doesn't, it doesn't half land, like it lands or it doesn't, yeah. it's like, you know, a bird lands or it doesn't, it, like, like it's not gonna <laughs> half land. Um, and so, so, uh, so in that sense, these, these shows where I'll, I'll bring a new song and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying, I, I'm trying this out, you know, I've got this new song, I've, I've finished. I think in most people's minds, they're like, oh, here's a new song that's done, he will now sing it. What it really is, it's, it's like, might be done it might not be done We're about to yeah find out, you know and 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 i found it really helpful there, there's a and so there's pros and cons of that let's say you do that the first show you do it let's say it doesn't land well then what do you do i mean yeah uh, and sometimes uh, when i was sort of learning the process i would stop there what i've really learned is you got to do it a few times because there's many things that make songs land or not land. Like maybe the waitress dropped a tray of drinks. Like, like you know, literally, like <laughs> yeah. you you don't know, right? And so do it a few times, and you'll really get a sense, you know, with the law of averages, if the song is working or not. And and it's it's less about I think it's less about you know how much people clap or did they have tears. Like it's, it's not that you feel yeah. it in your heart. You feel in your heart, and it's so it's a tool for you. Uh, me as the songwriter to just to feel is the song connecting because it's it's what there's there's so many levels to a song and I, I know you've talked about this in several of your wonderful tutorial videos it's like um 
you can you can muck with the words, you can muck with the melody, the chord progression. Here's their prosody, like all the things, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, the job of a song is to land in someone's heart and make them feel something. And you can tick all the boxes about rhymes and imperfect rhymes and you know minor keys and shifting to major keys, and you can everything can tick. But does it does it make someone feel something? Like yep. that we're in the business, whether we're making lots of money or little money or no money, we're in the business of feelings. And mm. people like and I, I would submit people don't buy tickets to a concert. People buy tickets to a feeling. Uh, I'm a firm believer in that. And like on, on on the conscious level, they'll say, I'm buying a ticket to I'm buying a ticket to a show Friday night. What they're really trying to do is buy a ticket to a feeling. And musicians mm. are, are are live music. Uh, it's one of the uh, one of the last places where where people are are still going with a person live in front of them, helping them feel something. Probably you can even say helping them work through something on a certain level, right? So, yeah. so, so, I, so I find, circling back, I find I've found taking songs that might be done, might not be done, but they're getting close and, and I'm feeling like they're pretty good. And that, putting them in that sort of incubator situation with some real listeners and, and, and feeling what the song is doing or not doing, it's become invaluable. Awesome. I think that's a great place to kind of wrap up. So as we are wrapping up, what's some advice that you would give someone watching that's maybe just starting out, you know, maybe they've written enough songs to play gigs and kind of starting that. What advice would you give to someone like that? Oh, I would, I would say go sing, like go, when you've got uh, songs in your quiver, that you feel are strong songs, presumably you've written, say, you know, a hundred and chosen your 10 best or something like write a lot of songs and get your, get your best ones. Yeah. And, and if you're a, a particularly if you're, if you're someone who wants to be a, a singer of your songs, go book yourself a gig, like some small gig. It could be where, where it's a pass the hat situation. Do it. See how you feel. See how it makes mm. you feel. See if you can, can you feel your songs connecting? Um, and just like, just get a sense of what, what the whole thing feels like. Um, because at the end of the day, to, to pursue the thing we're talking about here, which is like, like it's, it's a lot of work. I probably work 65, 70 hours a week. I don't know. It's a lot of work. Like, you actually can't be in it for the money. You can <laughs> only be in it because you love it. And I'm a firm believer that if you love it, the rest will fall into place. And so the advice is go do it. Do one, do two, do three, see how it feels. Um, and, you know, be honest with yourself. Awesome. And where can people listen to your music online? Uh, let's see. Spotify would be, although I think, I think Spotify is broken today. Actually, There's this big oh, really? going on. Yeah. Um, but Spotify, <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Straker, uh, or my website is jeffstraker.com. And there's a Spotify player, like, uh, cool. Of, like sort of select songs on the side. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thanks for, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you being with us today. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Man, Jeff, I could have talked to you for probably three or four more hours. I know I had lots more questions. I think that a lot of people have questions. I definitely want to have you back on at-home songwriting. I think it's so cool what you've done with your career and what you've developed. And for those of you watching, definitely check out Jeffrey's music online. And um, you know, let me know in the comments what you think about this type of, of uh, interview and if it's helpful for you. And I hope it inspires someone out there to say, you know what? I want to be a singer songwriter and I want to get myself writing the best songs that I can booking my gigs, doing all those things that Jeffrey talked about. And I think use Jeffrey as your guide to say, you know what, it can happen. And you can actually have a really cool life and a really cool uh, way to make money by being a singer and songwriter. So thanks again for joining us here at At Home Songwriting. Check out some of these other videos on the craft and the inspiration and the education all around songwriting. I appreciate you for being here. Check out the description for other links and let's keep moving.